Um, so the second report under uh, the principal's report is our second semester culture report where Dave reports out on attendance, student discipline, and overall uh, extracurricular clubs. Before that, uh, just so the parents are aware that after the uh, discipline report, the board president will move up the visitor statement. So if there are parents looking to make a comment about lacrosse, uh, that will have their opportunity under visitor statements. All right, well, thank you. Good evening. So today we're going to talk about the school culture report, which includes an attendance comparison for second semester, as well as the behavioral report, which outlines suspensions, and lastly, um, the engagement numbers um, for an entire year under our extracurricular programs. First, looking at the attendance report, the average daily attendance for this semester was 93.94. I do want to note that this comes directly from our Skyward data system. So this is the, the data that we submit to the state is 93.4 for the semester. Um, looking at the total attendance by reason, that's hand calculated. So there's a little bit of a difference between those attendance numbers from the excused and unexcused categories based on hand calculations. And how we do that is we take the total number of unexcused absences or excused absences and we divide it by the number of school days per month. So they're closely um, to where we needed them to be, but we're not exact on certain, certain uh, months. Um, we sent the previous report out and we included, we did not include the WAVE students. So if there's any hospitalizations or students in those categories, that's why those numbers are a little bit off. So we put those students back in, recalculated it, and then sent that out to you uh, this afternoon. So when we look at our excused absences, total semester averages for the semester of students that were excused was 82 students per day. Um, if you look at the months, pretty comparable in May. Obviously, we have more students here as we wind up the end of the school year. Students are more apt to be in class to prepare for their final exams, things like that. That's pretty consistent from year to year. Uh, looking at the unexcused absences, 14.44 unexcused average per day. Students are out that they didn't call in um, or don't have a reason for their excuse. Moving into tardies. Parties are calculated through our hero system, and we keep going down, which is a good thing each year. So when we started the hero program, 15, 16, 13.38, so we knew that was going to go up a little bit because now we have a consistent way of tracking our tardies. Um, previous to that, teachers would just do that within their own classroom, so they may get to it halfway through their instruction or at the end of their lesson plan. And so those were a little bit inconsistent with how those are tracked. Now each student, if they're late, the teacher closes the door, they have to go to the security, they get a pass, and so that's accurately collected. So the total semester would be 11.53 uh, per student per period that we're tardy. Uh, we saw a little bit of an increase here as the weather got a little bit better. Um, we always see a, a, a little bit of a decrease in the beginning, right? But as the weather increases and the school year winds up, we see a little bit more students late to class. But we are seeing a decrease overall in students in the hallways after the bell, so that's encouraging for us, so it's 11.53. Overall, i say it was a pretty good year for attendance, and this is the state average daily attendance that we're going to report. Uh, semester 1 is 95.1. That was the highest going back to 13.14. Uh, semester 2, 93.9. Again, uh, a little bit higher than last year at 93.7. And at the end of the year here, we finished off at 94.52. That's going to be our end of the year ADA that we report to the state. And again, these are estimates um, on the ADA. Uh, we're going to wait till the fall to give you that official number because there's going to be a little bit of our students that transfer out aren't calculated into our overall ADA until the state gets that report. So in the fall, we'll give that final number to you. So last year, we talked about Thursday's late start. Did you see any? You know, we talked about how to how to help that. Well, that was a lot of kids were the majority of our late tardiness mm -hmm. segmented to late start day. Yeah. Would you see that? I think just through this year. This year, it, it, it's been decreasing, to be honest with you. Um, just being present right at Doré at the start of the school day, uh, we've seen those numbers completely diminish. Um, when we started the Hero System, to be honest with you, we'd have 100 kids lined up at the door waiting to get in. And uh, now it's down to maybe eight, nine kids on average. 
So we've seen a significant decrease, and I think that's due to the consistent um, enforcement of consequences. You know, if once they reach a certain number, they're going to get a consequence. Um, so if you get three tardies, you're going to hit a lunch detention. You know, and we had a lunch detention person in there almost every day this year. So that assisted with us as well. So if you're going to get three, you're going to automatically go in on this selected date. And so with a, a person that's there every single day now, we're able to enforce it a little bit better. We saw those numbers decline. So it's been a, been a positive thing. Any other questions on that? Um, just a couple things that we've been doing. Uh, we completed, obviously, parent phone calls and build, in building meetings. We did 53 home visits for students not attending school throughout the year. So that's where our deans and now our school safety liaison would go out to the house, uh, talk with the parents, see if we can get the student to school, uh, see if, you know, if there's anything that we can do, if there's another intervention we can try. But I think it brings that connection from school to home uh, together, and, and that's a, an added thing. And I'm, I'm really fortunate to have um, our deans that are, are out front and doing that, and now that lane's here along with them, and it's, a, it's an added bonus here that we can do. Uh, the dean's office did after exhausting all our interventions. So if we do the home visit, we do the parent conference, we rope in student services, we maybe look at some special ed eligibility. If that's really not working, um, the end result, unfortunately, may be a truancy ticket where they have to go in front of a judge and have to explain their absence to a judge. So we did enforce 30 truancy tickets over the cross of the school year. Um, again, we, we roped in with the uh, student services team through student intervention meetings and we reviewed those behaviors, how we can curb those behaviors, what can we do inside the classroom, how can we maybe get teachers to help out with some behavior stuff, things like that. Um, again, then using heroes to accurately track tardies has helped our behaviors as well. New initiatives this year, um, there was a question about the cell phone parking. Um, I, I uh, put a request out to our teachers to see if they'd be interested in getting like a, we call it a parking mat for cell phones. So they hang it right by their, their desk. So, you know, it's in a semi-secure location. When students come in, they put their cell phones in, and that way they disconnect. And sometimes we, think, we know that students need, a, like, a little bit of an incentive to disconnect from their, from their cell phones. And now that everyone's one-to-one, -one, you really don't need a cell phone. Um, and so if the student would turn in their cell phone, we'd give them five hero points. And teachers would then complete that. And at the end of the year, we had a big hero party where we gave away T-shirts, ice cream, things like that. We had a dunk tank out there, and some teachers were in that. So it's it's an incentive for kids to disconnect, but also get some rewards on on the end of it. So that worked out really well. Um, we significantly increased the amount of uh, attendance meetings that we've had with the social workers, counselors, with our psychologists. We really looked at our special ed data this year, having those frequent meetings with our psychologists to identify students from our special ed. Uh, category that may need some assistance um, behaviorally. Um, hallway restriction, sending out that list. If you hit a certain number of tardies, you're going to be on hallway restriction. That, that means students during the class period, if they needed an escort, if they needed to come out of the room, we would provide that to them. But if not, they'd be on hallway restriction where they could not get out of the classroom. And then we sent letters, obviously, to parents and guardians who students have 10 absences. And then we followed that up with the meeting. So a lot of things that are going on in the dean's office, I think, all contributed to our positive attendance rate. Discipline. All right, second semester, I think, was a really good semester for us, discipline-wise. We had zero alcohol suspensions. Um, you look at our drug possessions, um, we've had total offenses were four, total students three, so we had one repeat offender there. Um, fighting was way down, and I think that's contributed to having a safety liaison in the building at all times. Um, we're down from first semester, and if you look at 15, 14, 15, and 16, we're down. Uh, we had seven total uh, students that were involved in four offenses there. Uh, disrupting the learning environment, bullying, intimidation, um, suspended four students for that. Zero gang suspensions, zero thefts suspensions, two weapon possession. Um, and that would be a student bringing in, you know, a fake knife or a toy gun or something like that. And that's something that we had to address at the end of the year. Um, inappropriate or non-compliant behavior, a disrespecting of all, that's always where we're going to see our most suspensions from. And that may be where, you know, it's just an insubordinate student that's not willing to budge or not willing to cooperate. And so we had nine total suspensions there, um, nine students had suspensions. And then other offenses may be an electronic violation or something like that where a student's going on a website or 
somewhere not appropriate um, misuse of their technology. So totals, we had 25 total and then 28 students for suspensions. So the numbers from 2014 to 2017 significant? Very significant. So, so could you tell us then why in 2015, 16, and 14, 15 you had like roughly 70 and 70 in the last two years you were like 30 and 30 what what do you feel changed that we went half yeah so when i came in the state changed their requirement for suspensions a little bit right um through senate bill 100 and because of that now we need to exhaust every intervention prior to suspending a student so that may be looking at uh, alternate day assignments a little more frequently than just going out and suspending a student, limiting the number of suspension days for a student for offense, and then also I think just roping in additional resources. So when a student is suspended, they automatically come back and we have a reentry meeting, and we team that reentry meeting up with our counselor or social workers, and then we can continually stay on that with the student as well. So we've seen a progressive um, intervention track here instead of just Let's put the student out and then hope they change their behavior and come back. Let's work or restore their behavior um, in the school while we have them here. So I mean, would you say, are you able to say, maybe Kristen would be a better person to answer the question, because you're only here, this is your second year, right? Third year. Third, Third year. year, I'm yeah. sorry. And this is your, how many years you've been here now? This is my uh, six. Six, so do you think the, is as much that with all the work you're doing, we're seeing better behavior of the students, or is it just the change in the law that required us not to suspend students for things we used to suspend them for? Uh, I would certainly say it's a combination of both. Okay. Um, you know, certainly we're a high school, so we're always going to have students that right. you know misbehave and need to be redirected. Here. But um, you know, certainly I think uh, it's a combination of a lot of the hard work that the staff, um, especially Dave Mannon, have put in um, to. Um, put some positive incentives in for our students as well as um, change the way we discipline students um, and certainly you know Senate Bill 100 helped as well. Additional lane? Mm -hmm. In addition to lane and the state's doing a really good job now of providing professional development for our deans so when they go out to these dean conferences they learn about restorative practices and when we put lane lane has gone out to three conferences himself and he talks with local law officials and you know how can we form relationships with students and not, you know, rather than just kicking them out for a couple of days, let's bring them in, let's get to know them, let's see what the triggers and students are for their behavior. And it's really been working, so we're going to continue that. Were there any other questions that needed to be addressed, Dave? Not that I can think of. Okay. Kristen, did you have anything else you wanted to address? Uh, no, just the last two pages um, of Dave's report talk about um, activities, and that's just an overview of um, participation by activity. And then when he comes back in the fall, um, he'll report out on specific engagement rate, um, which includes athletics and goes into a little bit more detail. So this is a lot of data here. It's rough data, and we'll give you, you know, our fall our report here. Uh, but this is from. All of our sponsors submit a roster to us that gets put into our Skyward system. We pull our participation rates out of that. And if you look at all of our categories here, we've had a pretty good year. Um, 1163 was last year, 1111 was this year, but then you look at all the activities that we've added. Um, since I've been here, we've added more than 10 activities. And that's awesome. And, and that's uh, some of those are on volunteer status. So if you look at our lacrosse gaming club, Project 7, the Helping Paws Club, Hip Hop Club, Robotics was a huge addition this year in ping pong. And it's over 100 additional students that are engaged um, after school hours. So it's been a, a huge plus for us. Um, so although you see the total there it is a little bit down, overall we're way up. And Robotics this year is another offering for STEM that we have in the building. I'm really excited about that program. And that was a volunteer program that was not funded and they went out and sought grants from the first organization, matching grants, they had some community donations and they were awarded one of the up and coming programs um, in their first year, it's phenomenal. And we had about 19 students that were involved in that and they're gonna continue to grow. So I'm excited about that program and all the other extracurriculars that we have to offer here. It's just you know, a really cool place to for students to, if they have an idea, 
to come explore that idea with us and then if they have the participation and the engagement we're going to run with it as long as we have the backing from our staff and we have the sponsors on board and so this is the fun part of my job is really seeing what we can give back to our students in the, in the means of extracurriculars and so our our rates are increasing and, and overall our kids are getting involved so so you're not counting the 138 and the 1153 down below correct I would say the board would probably tell you that as long as those kids are participating in a club that's supervised, even if it's a volunteer or probationary status, they're still off. They're not sitting at home on Facebook or Instagram. They're doing something. So right. Would the board be supportive of them, including that 133 and the 1153? Yeah. yeah. We have others where we, isn't the athletic trainer group, that's purely voluntary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's another one that's been voluntary for years. Our tech department as and well. I would, yeah. I would, I would add hockey on there because. Oh yeah. <laughs> so we're well over thirteen hundred then. I think you should update that and just give me a new copy and I'll send it out to the board on my Friday update. Sure. Include hockey and the uh, clubs that are on probationary because the board wants kids. Just getting involved after school or before school. Whether it's a probationary club or not, they're involved in something, they're a part of something. Is that, is that fair to say? Yeah. Yeah, board. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.